Good morning, everybody. Lovely, bright morning in Maynooth. Um, I'm going to start by saying that if you see your image this morning in a way that you don't like, we are not taking any responsibility for that. It is as you appeared last night or during the day yesterday. So um, any complaints, please give it to one of the Troker staff and we'll duly ignore it. So my recap on yesterday. And for those of you who are here, this is a reminder of what happened yesterday. And for those of you who are not, it's just an opportunity to get an insight into the material we covered yesterday in terms of where we got to by the end of yesterday evening. So yesterday, three themes ran through all of the presentations that we had, including the keynote address by Mary Robinson. And the first theme I want to focus on is the theme of intergenerational justice. We started off with a poetry reading from a primary school student called Elise. And really, her input to us was a reminder that most of us will not be here on this planet at the turn of the century. But those who will be will largely experience the planet based on the actions that we take today. And to have a primary school student remind us through poetry that her life is largely going to be framed by how we act and what we do over the next number of years was the very start to what the conference was about. Amy, who spoke to us, talked about a theme that I hadn't heard before, which was peak youth. And what she said was that as a 17-year-old student, that the majority of her life has not yet been lived and that her generation are demanding change as young people whose lives and futures will be largely framed by the actions that we take. And the intergenerational theme was carried on by Mary Robinson. She talked about being at a march and seeing a sign saying, angry grannies for change, if some of you remember that. And when Eamon introduced her and her list of achievements, the one that she chose to add was that of grandmother. I don't think she came across to us as an angry grandmother. But I think what she wanted to highlight was very much that intergenerational justice is here and it is now. And the actions that we take are going to be so important in terms of the future of our children and grandchildren. So in many ways, throughout the day yesterday, we had the very young to the self-acclaimed grannies talking about the protection of the rights of future generations. That was the first theme that ran through most of yesterday. The second theme was one of interconnectedness. And when we started off last night, are three introducing speakers, Professor Nolan, Monsignor Connolly, and Eamon Meehan, talked about the connections between ethics, science, morality, and politics, and how all of those combined are intrinsically important to approaching a topic like climate change. But for me, the interconnectedness also happened in another way. We had a young man called Andrew from the Scouts with us yesterday who talked about the interconnectedness that we all share as being part of the human family. And he said, I am part of the world. I'm not just here to use it. Mary Robinson expounded on that theme by talking about how there were no boundaries to climate change and that in the world that we see today, that the poorest pay the high, highest price despite being 
the least responsible. And she talked to us at length about how the impacts of climate change will be so much worse for those in developing countries and that the injustice of climate change is exactly that, that those who do the least are asked to pay the highest price. And the third theme that was carried through the evening was one that I thought was almost the theme of a journey. When Amy stood in front of us, she talked about her own journey of coming to classes and lectures with a Trokera program and learning about climate change. And last night, a number of people in the Pugin Hall talked about the journey of the head and the journey of the heart. And what I found most, I suppose, touching about Mary Robinson's keynote address was also her own analysis and reflection on her own journey, that when she worked exclusively in the area of human rights, that at times she found it difficult to connect that work with the explicit work of climate change and climate justice. And that it was the experience of meeting with rural farmers across Africa that took her on that journey. And I guess I left the auditorium last night thinking about what Eamon said about 44 million palm trees and the lives of countless tens of thousands of farmers whose economic livelihoods were ruined in those six hours of that typhoon. So yesterday evening, the journey that we all took in Pugin Hall, it spoke to me about how we have all reached this place at this time, and we have made different journeys to get here. We all know in this room what no action means. We know what it means for our planet, and we know what it means for the next generations to come. We all share that analysis, and we've all shared somewhat that journey to get here. But we also realized as we went around that room that our need to mobilize people, to educate, to mobilize communities for action is part and parcel of what we now need to do. And yesterday morning, we had a mass here in Minut, um celebrated by Bishop Gomez from Bangladesh. And what was amazing in that was the amount of young students from schools in Minuth who were actively engaged in thinking about climate justice and in advocating in their own way in their schools for it. And last night, all of you were asked to record thoughts, action points, on green cards when we were in Pugin Hall. And we collected hundreds of these, actually. And we're going to use the quotes during the course of the day to remind all of us of what we recorded last night. But as we were recording it, I went back to a line that Mary Robinson used in her keynote address, where she said, the tipping point in our world has come for many vulnerable people when it comes to the experience of climate change. But the reflection for us must be that the tipping point has not come for us yet in terms of organizing and engaging people to take real and active change in making the real difference in our own communities and in our own country. So last night was largely moving from evidence to action as we talk about this conference. And the theme that I picked from reading through all of these cards last night, it was the question of what will make the difference in building momentum to reach a tipping point where we can really say that we have engaged schools, engaged media, an engaged community, engaged public, 
around taking the actions that are necessary on this topic. And I realized in going through them that no one massive big action will get us there. In reality, what these cards represent are single actions, tens of actions, hundreds of actions, and thousands of actions that combined together will really and truly hope for us to make a difference. As I sum up yesterday, um, from 10 o'clock yesterday morning in St. Mary's Church in Maynooth to about 10 o'clock last night in Pugin Hall, the thoughts that came together on these cards and from the conversations that we all had largely bring us to the point of where we are today where we understand the situation that is presented to us. We understand the implications of not taking action. And as we go into today, it is about building momentum. It is about coming together and being able to articulate for ourselves and for each other what are the actions that we will take coming out of today that will make the difference in reaching this tipping point. Thank you.